Is it ever too late to upgrade your wardrobe? Do you think you are too old or too young? Or are you too settled in your sartorial routine and think it's too troublesome to change? Well, if John Rees, a veteran with a serious grooming problem, can reform himself into a sharp-dressed man, then anyone can. Of course, while his style changes at breakneck speed for the sake of storytelling, you can easily change your look at a slower pace. But let's start with his hobo chic and see what elements need to be improved, and then let's take a look at the results and his personal style for wearing suits. Welcome back to For the Law of Suits. And if you're new here, we find inspiration on how to wear suits from the best dressed men on the screen. John Reese is a man of many skills who has lost his way and that lack of motivation has left him close to the edge and looking like a down and out with nowhere to go but down. Obviously, he's in need of a shower as well as a haircut and beard trim. And of course, his shaggy, ill-fitting clothes as well as his filthy skin mark him as a vagabond. Although worth noting is that his clothes are actually layered very well for the cold. His style is not too bad either. They just look a little bit dirty and shabby but it shows that once upon a time, he knew how to dress well, even if it's just in the most casual sense. Naturally, this is exaggerated for the TV to move the storytelling along, but they are key elements for anyone to look out for when improving their image. Skin care, hair, beard, body odor, and of course, what we're going to concentrate on today, clothing. So having attracted the attention and accepted an offer he can't refuse from a millionaire altruist, he has to clean up his act. And of course, that'll start with a shave. I do wish some of these action shows would leave some facial hair, but they always see being clean shaven as the ultimate sign of a tough guy. But that unkempt beard had to go. Not sure who cut his hair, but they did a good job. And we can now see his new image developing. His first stop is jeans and a t-shirt. And while nothing remarkable about that, they are of course a good fit. And fit is the key to all clothing looking good, whether casual or formal. Even a simple t-shirt can look either sloppy or stylish. And while the cut and fabric quality matter, nowhere near as much as the fit. Even a cheap t-shirt can look good when the fit is right. So above all else, nail the fit of your clothing. So if you're enjoying this video so far, please hit that like button. It helps bring this video to the attention of other menswear enthusiasts. His first outerwear is still not the sharpest. The style of jacket, which is either leather or wax cotton, alludes to his military background, and I guess is supposed to be rugged, but looks a little bit worn. I think it's a good first step on his way to finer clothing. Going too far from shabby to smart in one move can be a mistake, and you will make better decisions along the way if you build your wardrobe one step at a time. His first suit is not a bad one. Although I frequently state not to get a black suit for your first suit, I have a feeling he will have access to an unlimited clothing budget. It's a black two-piece suit with a notched lapel. That is a small V cut into the edge of the lapel rather than the other option, a peaked lapel. The notched lapel is considered more casual or less flamboyant. He has paired it with a strong blue shirt with an open collar. An open collar, as we shall see, is his signature style. But he has made one error here. His undershirt is visible and that does not look good. A piece of fabric peeping out beneath your shirt is distracting and brings attention to your underwear, which is not desirable. If you need to wear one with an open collar, then wear a V-neck so it won't be visible around your neckline. Oh look, Daniel Craig, this is what an action sequence looks like when you are running but your suit still fits. Blue is an excellent choice for a shirt to match with a black suit, as the standard white shirt and black tie might make you look like you got your first office job. The blue is less contrasty than a white shirt and a good way to dress down a suit. The open collar drives it down a little further and it's a great look for a suit worn casually, in my opinion. In the next scene, John is back to casual wear with a dark green Mac worn over a sweater. The Mac, or Macintosh raincoat, is distinguished by a straight body, neat collar and lack of lapels. It's usually made from a waterproof cotton. Underneath, he wears a sweater and possibly the same pants from the earlier scene with what looks like suede chukka boots. And while his employer, Harold, is wearing a higher quality wool overcoat, both men are making a mistake by plunging their hands into their pockets. If it's that cold out where you live, do your expensive outwear a favour and buy some gloves. And John is maximising his wardrobe by fixing them and matching his elements. He's wearing the same Mac and pants but has on a blue shirt from the earlier suit. But let's get back to John's signature look, the open collar shirt with a suit. It's a look I like a lot. It gives your body all the shaping and masculine look of the suit while instantly dressing it down. Letting people know that you like to look good but don't stand on ceremony. It says respectable, but approachable. The black suit is back again, this time with a white shirt, but with no necktie. It doesn't read the same as with a tie. Again, his suit has notch lapels for the easygoing feel, and his white shirt is as neat and well ironed as it should be. Most men probably have at least one white shirt in their closet. For a while, I resisted the ubiquitous white shirt, as I didn't think it suited me. However, I changed my mind. It's actually quite an important item in your wardrobe, but there's a catch. A clean, crisp white shirt elevates the look of any suit, or even just a pair of jeans and chinos. There is just something pristine and elegant about a crisp white shirt. But there are two caveats. It must be extremely clean and well ironed to work. 
White shirts need special care that other shirts don't need so much. Never wear one more than one day in a row and wash it in between wears. It might seem clean, but stains can suddenly appear and may be hard to eradicate later. Or it may just turn grey or yellow without you noticing. And a faded or worn out white shirt is worse than no white shirt at all. So you will also need to purchase bleach alternative to whiten them up every now and then. Pay particular attention to the neck and underarms, because if you don't, somebody else will. And learn to iron a shirt properly. There are great videos on YouTube that show you how to do this. The only thing worse than a stained white shirt is a crumpled white shirt. I have seen some horrifically massacred garments. In one incident, the managing director sent the employee home to iron his shirt. I really thought he wore a shirt made out of crepe paper as a dare. My guess is that he washed it the night before and forgot to take it out of the washing machine until just before leaving for work. Not sure how he thought he could get away with that. John is becoming more comfortable with his new life and trying out different looks, all within the comfort of his chosen style. Here he wears a charcoal grey suit with a matching grey shirt. This is a sophisticated look to pull off and is also not for everybody nor every walk of life. It's a great look if you were a spy, especially with those shades, but you wouldn't want to be working incognito like, like John, I guess. Oops. It's definitely not for those who wish to fly under the radar. You will get noticed and complimented. This combination does not follow the classic rules of dressing, which states that your shirt should be lighter than your suit. However, always remember that they are actually guides and not rules, and they are not meant to be enforced. Even Alan Flusser, the man who wrote the rule book in the excellent Dressing the Man, and it is recommended reading for anyone truly interested in why the suit has developed into the ultimate menswear, says that sometimes, even when you break all the rules, it just works. And at the end of the day, what works for you works, and you should embrace it. Think of Ralph Lauren and all his variations on how he wears suits and sports coats. Original and works. On close examination of all John's shirts, a small detail will reveal itself. A good stiff collar is required for this to work well. If you're going to leave more than one button undone, you don't want your collar collapsing down and your shirt folding over on itself. This can look sloppy rather than manly, and it's this kind of attention to detail that impresses people. Easy, of course, when you have a wardrobe department behind you. Unlike the previous look, wearing light or pastel shades of colour for your shirt is easy to pull off. John is wearing a lilac shirt. It's a nice alternative to the businessman's best friend, the light blue shirt. You could try pink or salmon, colours that work well with different suits, whether they be black, blue or grey. The pale colour allows you to wear any suit or necktie without getting too funky, and adds a bit of colour in life when you get bored with white. And while we're here, we might as well take a quick look at his boss's excellent and extensive wardrobe of fabulous suits. No surprise that he has a different style to John, coming from a financial and tech background. His suits are worn quite formally, with a necktie and often a vest. The fabrics are high quality, but again, the fit is perfect. He has to pass himself off as all kinds of investors and financial wizards, and although he has the money to back it up, he has to look the part too. And he does and I'll be taking a look at more formal suits from some movies in the near future. So which of John's suits do you like best? The classic white shirt or the cool dark monochrome look? I'm really pleased with the small growing community of subscribers we have here. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and I'll keep these videos coming. And thanks for watching till the end and I'll see you in the next video.